Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers on this channel. Today, we are going to be talking about what's going on in the Zeldin Hoko campaign with a specific focus on a case that Lee Zeldin has brought to the forefront because unfortunately, after looking into his ad, it is significantly worse than what was advertised. But for those of you who are unaware of what's going on right now, according to Trafalgar, which by the way, was the most accurate pollster in the New Jersey gubernatorial race, November, 2021, the most accurate pollster in 2016 and one of the most accurate pollsters in the year 2020, Lee Zeldin has a slim margin one point ahead of Kathy Hochul, which means that if you're in New York, you need to go out and vote. Early voting starts now. I will link in the description of this video somewhere where you could access your poll site. Go out and vote Zeldin and vote Henry for attorney general. Down ballot, obviously I voted Republican, but you could do whatever you want. The two most important races, in my opinion, R. Zeldin for governor and R. Henry for attorney general. Now that we got all that housekeeping stuff out of the way, today we're going to do a deep dive into the case, a tragic case, of the murder of 93-year-old Connie Tuori and Victoria Affett, the murderer who is now convicted and, by the way, was sentenced to only 29 and a half years, and you will know why I'm saying only 29 and a half years later on in this video, and what this means for the state of New York and how this is definitely on Kathy Hochul and the radical left for refusing to prosecute criminals for absolutely anything. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored, so I'm going to toss it to the sponsor, and then we'll come back, round it up on the other side. Are you aware that the aging process really starts to set in at age 25? You actually lose about 1% of your collagen per year, and if you want to test whether or not you're losing it, try pinching your skin. If it bounces back right away, then you're good. But if not, which is most likely, then you might be in need of a supplement and luckily for you i'm partnering today with liquidgoldajw.com this amazing collagen powder has five different types of key collagens in order to help you restore the youthful glow combined with turmeric which has also been shown to help aid in reversing the aging process and luckily for you you could try this amazing formula for 51 percent off at liquidgoldajw.com 60 day money back guarantee so lee zeldin the legend of zeldin hopefully the next governor of the state of New York dropped this campaign ad recently that tells the tale of Connie Tuori, who actually was murdered in her home by Victoria Affitt. Now, Connie is a world traveler or was a world traveler, unfortunately. She was 93 years old and she was murdered by a violent repeat offender who continually got break after break from the criminal justice system, including a cashless bail release just days before her eventual murder of Connie Tuori. Now, for my podcast listeners on Apple or Spotify, or for those of you who like to listen to videos on YouTube, Rumble, or Odyssey, wherever... I'm going to read you the text that the music is underscoring. 93-year-old Connie Tuori was tortured and killed at her Syracuse home. Her killer had just been released from jail with no bail. So the original plan was for me to play this advertisement for you guys in its entirety. However, I didn't realize this at the time, but the score used for this ad is actually copyrighted music. So as soon as I uploaded this to YouTube, it was claimed by the company associated with the music that was added. And then I look at Zeldin's campaign ad on YouTube, and it's also claimed by that same company. So obviously can't really do that because I can't risk copyright trouble for this ad. But what made this ad so powerful, and it will be linked in full in the description, please go over and watch it, was the fact that members of the family talked about the ongoing criminal history of the perpetrator, the continued release, and they directly blamed Kathy Hochul and endorsed Lee Zeldin. So Kathy gets the blame for the death of their relative, and Zeldin is presented as the solution, and the score is pretty good. I just wish I could play it for you without getting into trouble with YouTube. Now that ad is absolutely powerful, and you could understand understand when you have one candidate running ads like that talking about the number one issue in the state of New York which is crime and then you have the other candidate talking about the ghost of Trump and saying that crime is actually just a conspiracy theory. Governor Al, these are master manipulators. They have this conspiracy going all across America to try and convince people that in democratic states they're not as safe. Well guess what? They're also not only election deniers, they're data deniers. The data shows 
that shootings and murders are down in our state by 15 percent, even in New York City, down 20 percent on Long Island where Lee Zeldin comes from. So I just want to point out where Kathy Hochul is being insanely deceptive, because if you look at this chart, what you'll see is that in the year 2020, shootings in New York City doubled, doubled. And by the way, these numbers are comparable to 1990s levels of shootings. You know how people say, well, crime isn't as bad as the 1990s? Well, New York City shootings were as bad as the 1990s. Then you have a 15% drop off in shootings in 2021, which clearly and obviously is still well elevated from the previous years, from the previous norms. You have a trajectory of going down, a dramatic spike, and a slight decrease in the insane increase. And if you look at Manhattan, and there's a reason why we're analyzing this because it's incredibly important, you'll see that there's no decrease in shootings at all in 2021. And the reason why this is crucial is because Lee Zeldin has pledged to fire the woke district attorney, Alvin Bragg, who refuses to prosecute anybody, and Kathy Hochul has refused used to make any moves to do so. On top of that, we saw a near 50% increase in homicides in New York City. New York was around 300 homicides in the city, which is amazing, by the way, for a city of 8.5 million people. That jumped to 450. Now, Kathy Hochul's like, well, if that drops to 430, guess what? Murder is dropping from the insane levels that it jumped to year over year. You're not fooling anyone, Kathy. We know that crime is up. You can go into full denial and cherry pick statistics, but it's not going to help you this election cycle. However, when I wanted to look into this ad to figure out if everything was true, I ended up stumbling upon a bunch of fact checks that actually disputed one of the key points in the ad. But upon further digging, not only did I find out that this ad is in fact true, but it's actually significantly worse than you could possibly imagine, which is what we're going to go over. Because what the fact checkers try to do is stop just on the last arrest and claim that the judge could have set bail in this particular case, which of course is the last arrest. What they don't focus on is the fact that Victoria Affitt was a repeat offender and other criminal justice reform laws that Kathy Hochul refuses to change, like the less is more law, actually played into her being released time and time again even post-conviction, even when she continually violated the law while on probation. Thus, she should have never been arrested for half of the almost 10 charges that she was ultimately arrested for during the course of this lengthy criminal history. But you really need to understand what went down in this case. You really need to understand the horrific consequences of what Hochul is doing to our state so that you can understand what is at stake for this election. Because Connie Tuori, the 93-year-old woman, was not just murdered. You see, Victoria Affett actually entered the home of this 93-year-old woman and tortured this poor woman to death, including stuffing things down her throat, smothering her, and then unsmothering her, and stabbing her repeatedly. The murder actually went on for the course of over an hour, according to the security footage, and it is believed that the motivation for this might have been to steal the 93-year-old woman's clothes. It also needs to be pointed out that this is one of the only times in the modern history of Syracuse that this particular murder in the form of torture was ever charged, as in most heinous crimes in the state of New York do not meet this unique threshold for charging murder in this way. And by the way, this isn't the first instance of violence against the elderly that Victoria Affett has committed. Just days prior, she was arrested for assaulting a senior over $38 that she was trying to rob for that senior. Now, they could have charged her, and the judge could have used the fact that it was an elderly woman, and we have a senior protection law in the state of New York to hold this person. The prosecutor, who's actually a good prosecutor, pushed for a high bail, but they ended up releasing her automatically, no bail, no problem, and then she ultimately ended up committing this murder. Now, while that last arrest and that last release is, in fact, on the judge, and the judge should be held accountable 
for the role that the judge played in that last release, it is important to note that Victoria Affitt should have been in jail for a lengthy prison sentence long before this release, and what ended up happening was a series of left-wing, woke, equity-based criminal justice laws led to this person being on the street despite the fact that she continually, time after time, repeated and escalated her violence. So let's get into the criminal history so you can understand exactly how soft on crime led to the torture and murder of a 93-year-old woman. Now you have to remember that bail reform officially became the law of New York State post-2020, January January 1st, 2020 is when this went into effect. However, judges, as noted by the New York Post and other media outlets, have pointed out that as early as 2019, once the law was passed, were basically acting as if it was law and so were prosecutors because these people would be scheduled for release all at the same time on January 1st. But just because the law went into effect January 1st, we're only going to focus on the crimes and the charges that took place after bail reform was officially the law. So if there are more arrests prior to 2020, we're not talking about them. We're not including them. We're only going to focus on what was officially let go by bail reform and by less is more, the two key pieces of criminal justice nonsense that were passed and stood by by Kathy Hochul. So on March 7th, 2020, Victoria Affitt was arrested for assaulting somebody, and of course, she got a same-day automatic release, despite the fact that she was punching and kicking a person. Now, on April 10th, 2020, Affitt actually stole a car, but she wasn't caught until later, according to the district attorney. So, we have Grand Theft Auto, and we have Assault. In May 28th, 2020, Affitt is arrested after an encounter at Rite Aid, in Syracuse, and according to the document, she stole a Bluetooth speaker and a pair of sandals. When a bystander tried to stop her, she pulled out a steak knife and threatened to kill the person, and this was all caught on surveillance camera. Now, I need to point out right here and now that shoplifting, obviously, because we see shoplifters running wild in our state and across the country in states that have implemented similar laws, brandishing a weapon and making a terroristic threat, all things that were initially charged in this case were all in the original original bail reform law eligible for same day automatic release. So even though these charges were all serious and this clearly showed a pattern of violent behavior, we ended up with a release and the criminal justice history that could have stopped right here ended up continuing. June 6, 2020, Affid is arrested for breaking a window with a hammer. According to Fitzpatrick, she was released on her own recognizance. So that's a same day automatic release. Less than a week later, Affid is arrested for petite larceny at a Dollar Tree store, and she's released on an appearance ticket, because again, you can't hold them. Five days later, Affet is charged with first-degree robbery and fourth-degree possession of a criminal weapon, as related to the Rite Aid. Now, she ended up pleading guilty one month later on July 16, 2020, to those charges. So, even though she did a larceny, even though she threatened to stab somebody who tried to stop her from doing that larceny, she only got one month in jail for that crime. Time served plus three years probation. And, of course, one month later, her criminal history continued. On August 16th, she got into a fight with a man on Highland Street in Syracuse, and she stabbed him in the head. Now, the victim didn't cooperate with investigators, so that led to problems. August 22nd, 2020, court documents indicate that she got into a fight with a woman and she slammed her head against a tree. Now, on August 31st, 2020, they actually attempted to file a violation of her probation for the three-year suspended sentence that she got for the terroristic threat with the knife and the grand larceny and the illegal weapon. But because we have something called less is more, probation officers and parole officers are incentivized not to violate people's probation and parole. It essentially takes a dramatic circumstance for this to happen. You'll remember when we covered that sucker punch story where some guy who was on parole sucker punched somebody, put him in the hospital. He had to have emergency brain surgery, and it took an order from the governor in order to violate this person's parole because he was automatically were released under New York State's bail reform law. And the only reason Kathy Hochul did it in that case, if you'll remember, is due to overwhelming news coverage and political pressure. So imagine you're doing this specific case at the local level, you can't get Kathy Hochul to step in, so you end up with this person getting out and you not being able to violate their parole properly. Now on October 22nd, Affed is charged with grand larceny, 
unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, which occurred on April 10th. That's the Grand Theft Auto. And according to the court documents, she stole a car which was parked and running. Her hand was wrapped around the control, bleeding from an apparent wound. Investigators later identified her by the DNA. So she definitely stole that car. Affet is sentenced to nine months in prison. However, she's sentenced on January 13th but released on January 29th, 2021, time served. Now, I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but according to my math, it is about 16 days between January 13th and January 29th, yet a nine-month sentence somehow was covered with time served during that period of time. Now, I understand she got some credit for the time that she spent awaiting trial when she was actually held in jail, but still, the idea that you would get near triple time and then some for your sentence on serious charges when you're a violent repeat offender is patently absurd, yet the criminal history goes on. Now, on February 2nd, 2021, she is indicted for the August 16th incident. However, if you'll remember, that was the uncooperative witness. So even though she's indicted, unlikely these charges are going to stick. Not really got anything to do with anything. However, Affet was then arrested and charged with robbery and harassment on February 17th. Now, on February 18th, just one day later, Affet failed to appear in court. She's arrested for robbing a woman in her 70s at the Skyline Apartments. Remember that apartment complex. And she's accused of grabbing $38 cash from her and then biting her, according to the court documents. Affet is charged and booked. And then on February 19th, 2021, she is released with no bail against the advice of the district attorney. And of course, she failed to appear in court on the 25th. Now, there are a number of factors that go into this lengthy criminal history, a number of automatic releases where there should not have been. And of course, the fact that even not showing up to court is not enough to guarantee that you will be remanded as we see with the February 18th release and then her not showing up to court and the subsequent rearrest that led to another release the next day. So obviously we have an instance where a series of soft on crime decisions and soft on crime pieces of legislation led to this woman being let out. And of course, this ultimately ended up leading to her committing a murder on February 26, 2021 in the very same apartment complex to which she was released for assaulting another 73 year old woman that we just talked about. In our system, uh, the punishment is supposed to fit the crime. And I can certainly understand that with a crime like this, which is so horrific, a crime that's so unspeakable, so horrible, so evil, that it is very difficult to envision a punishment that fits the crime. Connie's cause of death was determined to be asphyxia due to suffocation, strangulation. Connie, a fierce independent, a world traveler, died alone in her apartment fighting and struggling for her life. Connie was found with objects in her nose and mouth and ligature marks around her neck. Connie sustained at least five stab wounds, and the defendant's DNA was the only other person's DNA to be in the bedroom where Connie's body was found. I don't think we really know exactly what happened when, and that kind of raises the specter of something even more horrible than we've frankly been thinking about, which is some of what went down before my aunt died. I would like to apologize I have trouble accepting the apology. Um, I feel like no apology can make up for what she did. Obviously, no sense is enough for a crime like this. Whether someone's 23 years old or 93 years old, they still have the right to get up every morning, see the sunrise, live their life, and experience the hopes, the joys, the dreams that all of us have a right to experience. Ms. Effett, I hope that you live with this and think about it every day of your life. She can't think back what she did. She changed our family's life and changed the life of everyone involved in this case. She um, is a monster who deserves to spend the rest of her life in jail. I don't think the people of Syracuse will forgive her for this. My family definitely won't. And I think it's important for her to understand that. Now, just because that is the day of the murder, that's the day that she tortured a 93-year-old woman to death, apparently to steal her clothes, doesn't mean that's when her criminal history started. Because the body of this 93-year-old woman, Connie Tuori, was not found for three weeks. So two days later, February 28th, 
she of course stole a car and crashed it because this person is a habitual offender and in March she's finally charged with the murder which ultimately led to her being convicted and being sentenced to 29 years but based on the way that she was serving her previous sentences she might be let out in Hokel's New York tomorrow because Victoria Affett according to Kathy Hokel is just a conspiracy theory she committed all these crimes but do they really exist because Hokel says they're not that real Hokel might want to release her. I don't know if you guys know this, but Victoria Affett might actually be an oppressed minority. Look, this is not a joke. This is not a game. The price for bail reform, the price for Kathy Hochul to go to her wealthy wine parties and talk about how she cares about the poors and how she's innovative on crime, about how she reimagined the criminal justice system, is paid in the blood of the innocent. This woman could have been stopped about 10 different times. And even though the last time specifically was on the judge, a bunch of the other ones were on the laws and the culture being put forward from the governor's mansion. This woman was released over and over again, cut break after break, aided and abetted by woke criminal justice policies, and now we have a 93-year-old independent world traveler who was tortured to death as a result of it. We need to be able to identify the predators in our society and remove them from our society. Do you know how odd it is for a woman to commit this many crimes? You know how many red flags have to go off in your head to see a woman time after time for repeat violent offenses? You need to be able to move this person out of society into jail. If they got mental illnesses, then they need to be confined as those illnesses are dealt with. And William Fitzpatrick, the DA involved in this, knew it each and every time. Each and every time he fought for bail. Each and every time he fought for longer sentences. But what happened over and over and over again? A weak judicial system a weak probation and parole system kept cutting her breaks kept saying you know what it's society's fault you know what I think she might be torturing people I think she might be stabbing people because she might be Aladdin you know what when she stole that Bluetooth speaker she was really just trying to feed her kids or the poor kids that are just in the streets you know just like Aladdin no these people are not Aladdin they're violent thugs and they need to be removed from our society they need to be locked away and Kathy Hochul doesn't get it. She was laughing at the idea that Lee Zeldin wanted to lock up criminals. This governor, who still to this moment, we're not, what are we, halfway through the debate, she still hasn't talked about locking up anyone committing any crimes. Okay. Anyone is. who commits a crime under our laws, especially with the change they made to bail, has consequences. I don't know why that's so important. She calls crime increases in almost every county in the state of New York a conspiracy theory. So the numbers, the math, everything that you can see that is measurable, just made up, doesn't exist. And if you deny it, maybe she'll go into that back door that they have over at Facebook and Twitter in order to get your posts pulled down. That's who Kathy Hochul is. That's what's at stake. If you live in New York, if you know anybody in New York, get them out to the polls to vote for Lee Zeldin. We have to take back our state. The legend of Zeldin is real. Get on board. And if you're not on board, then shut up. I don't want to hear anything from you. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about the horrors of the Hochul administration. Till next time.